Hi, my name is Danny LeBanter, and I'm a technical marketing engineer with the Enterprise team here in Cisco. In this video, we will go over the necessary steps to successfully integrate the Identity Services Engine with Cisco DNA Center. We'll review the prerequisites, the deployment steps, and finally provide a demonstration. A few things to keep in mind before initiating the integration. First, make sure that your Identity Services Engine and Cisco DNA Center are running compatible versions. A link to the compatible versions will be added just below the video, or you can do a search for SD Access Compatibility Metrics. Next, make sure your Identity Services Engine CLI and UI password match. Be sure that the PX Grid Services is enabled on your Identity Services Engine, as well as ERS API services. And finally, make sure that Identity Services Engine and Cisco DNA Center can reach each other. This can be done by running a simple ping command between the two. Now for a successful integration, there are three main services that need to be enabled. First, SSH must be enabled on the Identity Services Engine and is always best practice for a secure connection. This is used to establish a trust relationship between Cisco DNA Center and the Identity Services Engine by the exchange and validation of certificates. The next service would be to enable ERS API services on ISC and is used for Cisco DNA Center to communicate with ICE. Third, the PX Grid services must also be enabled, and Cisco DNA Center will subscribe to the PX Grid publisher to retrieve context and TrustSec metadata. To validate a successful integration, we can log into Cisco DNA Center and view the policy dashboard, at which time you should see an incremental numeric value under scalable groups. We can also log on to ICE and check if Cisco DNA Center has subscribed to the PX Grid publisher. And optionally, we can create a group-based policy on Cisco DNA Center and verify on the Identity Services Engine that the group-based policy matrix has been updated accordingly. This way, we have validated a two-way communication between the two services. So with that said, let's move on with a live demonstration. I'm logged on to the Identity Services Engine. And as we mentioned, we need to make sure that three main services are running. First one would be SSH, and when I first deployed my ICE instance, I verified that my CLI admin account as well as my UI admin account passwords are identical. Next, I'm going to check that the PX Grid services as well as ERS services are enabled. So I go to the administration system, and I can see here below that the PX Grid services is enabled. Next, I want to check that ERS API services has been enabled and I'll go here under ERS settings and I can see that it has been enabled. So with this section complete we can now log on to the Cisco DNA Center and initiate the integration. So we're now logged on to the Cisco DNA Center dashboard and we can initiate the integration but just before I'd like to go on to the policy dashboard and demonstrate what the dashboard would look like before the actual integration. And here on the Cisco policy dashboard, you can see scalable groups, which is null. And if I were to go to the virtual network to orchestrate a group-based policy, I'd be prompt with this identity services engine indicating that ICE has not yet been integrated with the Cisco DNA Center. So to begin with the integration, we'll go to system settings. I'll go under settings and here I have the authentication and policy servers. We'll press the plus sign to add the identity services engine. I will enter my IP address provide the shared secret that this would be applied to the network access devices when Cisco DNA Center provisions them enable Cisco ICE and put in my ICE admin account password.
enter the fully qualified domain name of the identity services engine I'm using. A subscriber name, and this would be the subscriber name that we will find under the PX Grid Publisher on Identity Services Engine. This can be any kind of arbitrary name uh, that makes sense to you when you see it subscribed onto the PX Grid Publisher. We can view the advanced settings, and we're going to leave the RADIUS protocol here as well as the authentication ports used for this RADIUS protocol. And we'll apply. So after integrating the Identity Services Engine with Cisco DNA Center, I should be able to go to System 360 and verify here that Cisco Identity Services Engine has been integrated. So now I can go to the policy dashboard and if I see here the scalable groups is still null. So there is one more thing that we need to check. On the Identity Services Engine we'll go to the PX Grid Publisher and here we can see that Cisco DNA Center, the subscriber, has been subscribed to the PX Grid but the status is still impending and we'll need to approve this to complete it. Now that this is approved, I should see the scalable groups number increment. And now you can see that the number has incremented. So here you can see that the Cisco DNA Center has retrieved the scalable group tags from Cisco Identity Services Engine. And if I were to go to the, to the virtual network, I now have my scalable group tags in my virtual network. That completes the video and I hope it was useful. Thank you.